What began as small talk over coffee at Chisholm Drugstore in Leveland became a quest for a new college on the South Plains of Texas. That's where Wilson Copeland, Sam Hamid, Forrest Weimholz, J.G. Stacy, and Bob Buster would meet nearly every morning to talk about building a local junior college. America had just won the Second World War, and a feeling that anything was possible swept through this nation. It was a resolute West Texas pioneer spirit that motivated this small group of businessmen to dream of expanding the educational and cultural horizons of the area's population. They also saw a community college as a powerful economic engine to drive the local economy and to provide opportunities that never before had been available. The fact that the Texas State Board of Education had five years earlier refused to hear a proposal to establish a junior college in Leveland did not deter this group from approaching the Board of Directors of the Leveland Chamber of Commerce. After all, a master's degree thesis written by O.W. Markham, superintendent of Leveland Schools, had documented the need for a college in Hockley County. In 1956, the Chamber commissioned a 10-member Citizens Committee to study the feasibility and build a case to establish a college. The committee called upon Dr. C. C. Culvert of the University of Texas, the veritable dean of Texas community colleges, to conduct the study. Support for the college was evident when 120 business and community leaders from a six-county area turned out to hear the results of Dr. Culvert's study. Emboldened by growing local support, the 1956 Citizens Committee approached the State Board of Education in early 1957 with a new plan. This time, the State Board was more receptive and approval was granted to start the process to establish South Plains College. The Citizens Committee soon presented a petition to the Commissioner's Court bearing the names of 560 Hockley County property owners and the election was called for April 2nd, 1957. Election Day was a big event in Leveland, and there was no doubt in the mind of Orland Brewer, committee chairman and editor of the Leveland Daily Sun News, what the outcome would be. Local voters overwhelmingly approved two to one the creation of the Hockley County Junior College District and elected seven trustees to govern the new college. The dream to establish South Plains College had become a reality. Chaired by Lamar West, one of the first actions of the board was to garner support from voters to issue $900,000 in school building bonds to construct the college's original five buildings. That approval came on July 13, 1957. Soon afterward, board members met with representatives of Marjorie Merriweather Post, heir to C.W. Post W. Ranch in Hockley County, to purchase 177 acres of farmland on the southeast corner of town for the college campus. The Board of Regents now turned its attention to hiring a college president and chose Dr. Thomas Spencer, Sr. Spencer and his family came to Leveland from Blinn College in Brenham, where he had served as president. When they arrived, they found a maize field and little else. Dr. Spencer was charged with the task of overseeing the construction of the college and hiring of its first faculty in time for an official start of classes in the fall of 1958. The faculty of 19 teachers that he put in place came to the college with strong teaching background in public education. Through the early months of 1958, Leveland residents watched as each of the college's five buildings took shape and form in that maize field. In March, voters in the Cochrane County portion of the Whiteface Independent School District approved an annexation proposal to join the Hockley County Junior College District. Nathan Tubb, Whiteface Superintendent of Schools, played a large part in building support for joining the college district. It took a team effort with some future SPC teachers like newly hired ag instructor Earl Gerstenberger actually helping as Finnish carpenters. But the school opened on September 15, 1958, after an astonishing 576 students enrolled for day and evening classes. The faculty worked until midnight processing registration forms for the 60 classes scheduled to meet the very next day. Many of the college's evening students were local townspeople who enrolled to show their support. Dr. Spencer relied upon the help of many, including Nathan Tubb, who joined the SPC team as its first registrar. Tubb wrote the first college catalog and was responsible for the development of the curricula for many of the first classes offered by South Plains College. He even served as the school's first guidance counselor. 
and later the academic dean and vice president. In 1961, Dr. Spencer left SPC to become the president of newly created San Jacinto College in Pasadena, Texas. And the leadership reigns passed to Dr. Marvin L. Baker. Dr. Baker was only 36 years old and at the time the youngest community college president in the state. During the next 33 years, the president known to most folks simply as Doc would lead SBC from a fledgling college to a widely respected and comprehensive community college with nearly 6,000 students. His management style, innovative educational attitudes, and ability to work with the Board of Regents was just what the young college needed. During the 1960s, South Plains College grew. The college operated bus routes that would bring students to the campus from the far reaches of the county and beyond. What spurred the growth was the college's transformation from a primarily academic transfer college to a broad-based educational environment that also stressed technical education. From the beginning, the South Plains College faculty and administration set a goal to develop instructional programs that would meet the needs of local employers. Early programs in nursing, radiology, and welding were the precursors to the college's present-day technical education division. In 1967, the college expanded its educational offerings to include 12 technical, and vocational, and occupational programs. Frank Hunt, who had served as evening college administrator, was tapped as dean of the new division. Like the college in general, the technical division grew rapidly as the college demonstrated its ability to quickly create and modify courses as the business needs changed on the Texas High Plains. Those who dreamed in 1957 of a college in Leveland could not have imagined South Plains College 10 years later. With an enrollment of more than 1,600 students, SPC had truly evolved into a comprehensive community college, offering academic transfer, technical education, and adult continuing education through a viable evening program. The college had become a resident college with dorms, student traditions, and a spirited program of intercollegiate athletics. Fifty years later, this two-year college rivals many four-year universities in Texas in student enrollment, educational programs, and prestige. South Plains College serves more than 18,000 students each year to take advantage of more than 100 educational programs and options. SPC has become recognized as one of the most modern and complete colleges in Texas. The Leveland campus now encompasses 40 buildings on its 177-acre campus. What sets SPC apart from other schools its size are its highly qualified faculty who have made it their life's work to teach and prepare students. First-rate classroom and lab facilities are specifically designed for each teaching area. SPC students have access to some of the most sophisticated and up-to-date training equipment available. Computer technologies can be found in every instructional area. The college's original Board of Regents believed SPC should serve students beyond Hockley and Cochrane counties. Their desire to make a college education available to residents throughout the region prompted them to adopt the name South Plains College. The college's service area now encompasses 15 West Texas counties that comprise the southern portion of the Texas High Plains. During the 1970s, SBC expanded its service to Lubbock and Plainview with its program at Reese Air Force Base, its downtown Lubbock campus, and its occupational training partnership with Wayland Baptist University in Plainview. Most recently, the development of a rural distance learning network has placed SBC programs and courses in the communities of Muleshoe, Denver City, Littlefield, and in Crosbyton. SPC's third president, Dr. Gary McDaniel, ushered in an era of educational partnerships, technology acquisition, and campus expansion that has made the college dream possible for thousands of South Plains residents. His leadership brought the college to its largest enrollment gains as SPC entered the 21st century. With the closing of Reese Air Force Base in 1997, SPC saw an opportunity to consolidate its educational program in Lubbock and acquired from the Department of Defense seven buildings that have been converted into modern instructional facilities. The SPC Reese Center provides a comprehensive program of academic transfer, technical education, and workforce development programs that are supported by a full complement of student services. The Byron Martin Advanced Technology Center is a cooperative partnership between SPC, the Lubbock Independent School District, and other community partners. 
SPC offers eight technical programs from the Byron Martin Center, which also serves as the college's headquarters for its workforce development program in Lubbock. In 2005, the college's newly built Plainview Center opened to serve the northern tier of the college's service area through distance learning initiatives. In 50 years, the educational program has grown from 25 original programs to more than 100 offered by three instructional divisions. The Arts and Sciences Division provides the general academic transfer curriculum through its 10 departments. More than 2,700 students in the division transfer each year into parallel university programs in science, communications, fine arts, math and pre-engineering, languages, behavioral science, social science, business administration, and physical education. The Health Occupations Division has distinguished itself by becoming the region's primary provider of allied health care workers. The division's nine programs graduate more than 300 nurses and allied health technicians each year. The Technical Education Division provides options for students to gain practical, hands-on training in 23 occupational programs that reflect the business and industry of the South Plains. The division offers more than 66 options in business, the creative arts, computer technologies, industrial technology, and professional services. From its unique commercial music program, to its recognized pre-engineering and science programs, to its expanding nursing program, SBC has always been on the cutting edge of developing innovative and unique programs to meet the needs of business and industry. The true heritage of South Plains College is embodied in the hundreds of people who in the past 50 years have been a part of the college as faculty, staff, and administrators. The college's outstanding progress has been the work of people who believe in the community college concept and who have dedicated their careers and their professional lives with a vision to improve each student's life. In 1957, Dr. W. A. Hunt, president of Howard County Junior College in Big Spring, told the Level Land Rotary Club that, quote, one of the biggest things Hockley County could ever do is build a junior college. How prophetic his message has been. What had once been a field of grain sorghum on the edge of a small West Texas town was transformed into a vibrant educational institution now known throughout the Southwest. South Plains College maintains its connections to the past while it embraces the challenges of the future. Its traditions are rooted in the individuals who founded, organized, and charted the course of a new community college. I think it's going to take exactly what it took for the last 25. It's going to take innovation, it's going to take good teaching, it's going to take people with dedication, it's going to take uh, community support, it's going to take all these things that you could say that happened, that caused it to happen in the past. I think it'll be different, but I think the same elements go into making a success from year to year for the next 25 years. As the college marks this 60th anniversary year, it does so with a renewed commitment to its mission and vision and the ideal that every individual, regardless of background, should have the opportunity to nourish the impulse to learn and to produce. Indeed, dreams do precede reality.